So we're gonna hop into some of the demos, but before we do that, so like I don't know what the YouTube rules are, so I don't know if I can actually show you a Vimeo video on YouTube. They, they strike me as somewhat sensitive, so I, I mean, I'm not trying to get any strikes for, for doing these videos, but there's a tutorial here that Andy did on, on the sports betting stuff with 2.0. I'm not gonna get into the sports betting stuff, but if you want that information, um, Andy did a great tutorial on it on, on 2.0. What I'm actually gonna focus on is a, a, a recap. So this is basically um, Matt, the founder, did a Vimeo of everything that we're gonna dive into for 2.0. So I'm gonna just basically give you guys like the Cliff Notes version and my interpretation of it, but he did a much better job of explaining this. And if, um, I don't know if I, again, like I don't want, <laughs> I'm not trying to get a strike on YouTube because I have a Vimeo link on my, on my, on my page. So, but I'll, I'll figure a way to get it to you guys or, or hit me up, send me an email, send me a DM, the same way you guys get all the information from me. I'll put it on Twitter, but he did an awesome, and he just goes nice and slow and covers everything. And he didn't leave any, any stone unturned. So we're actually going to hop into a build on 2.0 and I'm going to show you some of the things. So I want to show it to you first and then we'll dive into um, some of the uh, things that we talked that, talked about in the top of the video series about, you know, I'm, I, I don't know how to build or I don't know how to do research or I don't have a lot of time or I don't understand game theory. So the first thing we're going to do to, to start a new build, you click right here, new build or, or start build, whatever, they both work. And again, if, if at any time you get jammed up, um, you can refer to their, their FAQ little area here. Um, all of this stuff is going to be very similar to what we saw on um, 1.0, but like, let's say for instance, we're concerned about the Phillies and Nationals um, being postponed again. We just X them out, so they're highlighted. So if you see on the right, the players are, are leaving our player pool. So if you wanted to fade a game, that's how you would do it. So that game actually did get postponed. So if you did that, you're building a projection, uh, excuse me, you're building a, um, your lineups without those, those teams. So we're gonna start a new build. Let me clear this stuff out, start a new build. And these are gonna be all of your options and we're gonna, we're gonna dive into everything. But I think that, you know, one of the things that bogs a lot of players down is they're approaching DFS from a micro level and they're getting uh, in their own way and just diving over too much minutia. Like there's too much noise. Like once a day, someone will be like, dude, what are you doing with the pitchers today? And it's like, I don't even know who's pitching today. Other than like the teams that like I'm looking at to go after crappy pitchers. Like, I don't know if it's a Kershaw day. I don't know if it's a Verlander day. I don't know if it's a Scherzer day. It doesn't matter to me. You guys know what I do with pitchers. If you haven't seen that video, go back and watch. But if you're looking at it from a macro level, I pick DFS from a macro level. I just try to look at what stats are in, in, indicative of the things that win? What wins in baseball? Scoring runs. How do we find runs? Attacking bad pitchers. It's not that. It's not rocket science. So, with that said, what tools? Because, dude, I told you guys like I'm lazy, and on my conference call with Matt and Andy, they're like, dude, like we know like your style, and. You know, we really want to challenge you to get out of your comfort zone with this product because if you can, you're going to be introduced to something that, you know, is paradigm shifting. And it's like, dude, we don't get better without feeling uncomfortable. So I was like, okay, let's do it. And then they showed me and I'm like, dude, like this is like, you get, you can do so much. You can accomplish so much with a few clicks of the button. So this is what it looks like. This is our menu of options and we're going to dive into it. But I just wanted to show you uh, what it is before diving into the options. So I get this a lot. Dude, JG, like I, I've got like sometimes less than an hour. Like I, I work till five, lineups lock at six, and I got an hour to come home and kiss the wife and kids and grab a quick bite to eat, and then I got a bill. And, you know, I, I don't want to steal from my employer. So other than some, some research on my lunch break, I can't really do much. And, you know, I can't stay up late like you are, and I gotta get up at six. I don't get to sleep in uh, until 10, like you. And wear rapper t-shirts and look like a homeless person. But anyway, so for the working guy, like I got you, like, dude, like Kawhi plays in Canada. 
you know, the working man, it's a, a sick, sick rush song. Like, I got you guys. Like, I don't got you guys. Saber soon got you guys. So again, attack it from a macro level. Leave the micro stuff to the professional. Like, if you're not Hefe, if you're not Osimo, if you're not one of these best in the business guys, like, dude, giant squid. Julian is working on the stuff behind the scenes. Like, he's a way better DFS player than all of us put together. Like, why are we trying to be the smartest guy in the room? Like, the players that I work with that are comfortable being the dumbest players in the room, I'm like, dude, like, like we're going to have a good conversation, but, like, I don't need to worry about you because you're going to go far. Like, you get it. Like, you're, you're clicking the foundational things that we're talking about, putting in the work, having discipline, being patient. It's the guys that like insist on being the smartest guys in the room. And it's like, there's some people out there that know how stupid I am when it comes to like baseball and knowing players and stats that because I recommend something and they know how much more they know about baseball, like it's an insult for them to like approach it in such a remedial way. Or like, I'll tell them like, this is what I do. And they're like, dude, whatever. Like, you know, you're just like everyone else not sharing your secrets. It's like, no, like that's literally like what I do, but all right, cool. You know, screw me. Right. Approach it from a macro level. Stop worrying about all the little nooks and crannies. Like, find, like, we've covered a ton of metrics. Like, find the signal, ignore the noise. Find the runs, win the slate. Ignore the, whoa, but ISA, Sierra, XFib. Like, if it doesn't make sense to you, don't try to understand it. Who cares? Like, do what works for you. Like, this is a game to be enjoyed. If you don't have a ton of time, again, like, if you can't be one of the best in the world when it comes to this from a time perspective, Treat your DFS like a business. I am JG, the CEO, JG's DFS business. Saberson is one of the consultants that I have outsourced this part of my DFS business to, and they do a damn good job. They should charge $400 a month, not $40 a month. Like, that's how good it is. But, like, that's how we need to start looking at it. That's what I'm talking about. You know, the guys at Saber challenge me to paradigm shift and get uncomfortable. You guys need to start getting uncomfortable. Look at this from a macro level, not a micro level. If you can't win, it's because you're, you're, you're looking at the problem like this. And then you, 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 you take a step back and you're like, oh my gosh, like this is such an easier problem now that I can see everything. Like, that's, there's a reason why there's the saying, like, you can't see the forest through the trees. Like, you, you can't see the forest because you're, you're in the middle of it. But you take a step back and you go up to a higher place, like, all of a sudden... The force isn't so intimidating, and that's all we're trying to do is help you navigate the force of DFS. So with that in mind, we're going to talk about some game theory aspects that they've, they've, they've condensed to three really simple options uh, in terms of correlation, the ownership fade, and the, the smart diversity. Anything that you do, it's like people will ask me, like, dude, how do I win? It's like there's no right answer. There's so many paths to victory. Have a plan. When Kawhi steps on the court, he has a plan. This is the game-winning shot that he hit against the 76ers. He didn't just drift into the corner. He had big old Joel Embiid who's playing his like 44th minute and is tired as all get out. So what does he do? Being the fierce competitor that Kawhi, that Kawhi is, he gets the ball at the top of the key and takes jo Joel Embiid all the way to the other end of the court into the deep water so that he could elevate high enough to get his shot off and knowing that Embiid's dead legs at this point isn't going to block the shot. It's not like Kawhi just drifted over there. Kawhi read the scouting report. He had a game plan. He, had, he didn't know if the shot was going to go in, but he had a plan of attack. And that's all we're trying to do with DFS. Control what we can control. Once the game starts, if I'm on the Orioles and they don't score any runs, like that's on me. Like that's not on Matt. That's not on Andy. That's not on Saberson. That's not, that's not even on the Orioles. Like that's on me. Like that's the direction I chose to go. So, so, so stop playing the victim. Like have a victor mindset and, and take more ownership. And again, I'm not railing on any one individual. You know, sometimes your guys are like, dude, like you went pretty hard last week and you're speaking to me. Like, that's amazing. Like, again, like I, I appreciate that it resonates with you guys, but I'm really trying to rail on, on me. That was a really bad player years ago. So we're going to look at the correlation options. That's basically stacking. Like how correlated do you want your lineups to be? I'm not that smart. So I always want my lineups to be very correlated. It's if, if this team scores 10 runs and I've got a piece of every single person in the lineup and these guys are all touching each other in the batting order or around or whatever, like, boom, path to victory. That's simple. Ownership fade. Player fade the chop. We, we know what the right answer is here. And, and we're going to we're So not only am I going to show you this, I'm going to show you an example of how the owner, Matt, executed everything exactly like he took his own medicine. Like he did exactly, uh, well, I kind of ruined the surprise. When we get to that slide, please be surprised. Damn it, I can't believe I did that. See, I just get so excited and I get ahead of myself. 
And then our diversity is going to be very simple, uh, very similar to, um, you know, other sites call it randomness. Uh, they've done a great job of it's, it's actually smart diversification. So that's where we're going to factor in our, our range of outcomes. And, and, and that's what we're going to we're going to dive into here. So we're going to go into our build. So with that in mind, this is, these are the things to look at. I always like looking at the stacking. So add a stacking rule. You don't have to do this, but it's, it's pretty cool for some of you guys that, you know, want to get a piece of, because we know with DFS, MLB, like there's no right answer. Sometimes it's a five man, sometimes it's a four, sometimes a five, three, a five, two, a four, four, a four, three, a four, two. We don't know, but what we can do is we can control some of the parameters of, hey, we want at least, we want at least a four man stack. I would do a five, but let's just for posterity, just do a four. These are all of the teams that are going to be included when we build. If you want to be like me and just go in on a couple teams, like you can highlight that. If, if, if you're here for something different, that's what we're going to be. So like if you're here for something different, like listen up, like this next part's for you. So this is our, 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 our first thing that we're going to do. Um, we're, we're playing GPP. We don't waste our time with cash. This is a large slate, a 15 game. If you want to go to the small slate here, that's where you go. Um, Minimum salary, this is another way to, to get some game theory is removing this completely or setting a max salary. Like if you're going to, like, let's say you were going to go on the chalk. This might be a way for you to get on chalk that's going to be different. Most people aren't going to just cap it at and leave 500 bucks a salary on the table. That's something that you can do. But we're just going to do 50,000. And we always want to run 150 lineups. That's what we've been talking about. And we're not going to play a scared game. So we're going to leave our max exposure at 100. Uh, we never want our batters going up against pitchers. Uh, so we're going to leave that unchecked. Um, minimum projection, uh, we can leave five, but let's just do three just for the sake of spreading it around. And then here we go. Here's our correlation. And there's little question mark, little toggle switches here that you can look at. And it's pretty much uh, the more correlated they are, is more reliant they are on other people's success around them in the lineup. So pretty much stacking. Your ownership fade is set here right in the middle. If you want to uh, be heavy on the chalk, you go negative. If you want to high fade you know like this is like like for you guys who don't know how to create leverage like this is how you create leverage correlation high ownership fade or at least be on the the, the fading side of of the toggle switch and then your 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 smart diver, your smart diversity again if you want a wider range um you or if you want a tighter core go low if you want a wider range go high if you're not sure to stay in the middle and that's it. We're going to build. Like we're not going to. All we're doing is is programming with those parameters, and it's going to build for us. And the first part of the build takes a second to get off the ground, and then once it. So you see over here the progress. I'm sorry, you can't see it. The progress bar over here on the top left. This camera's all backwards. So it's it's. <laughs> Dude, I'm such an idiot. Like, I have a mouse. It's right here. Look at the mouse on the top left. So 13, 14. And when it gets to about a quarter, we're going to have some more data. But, like, right now, what it's doing is it's taking what we programmed, and it's running all of the guys in the player pool, minus the Nationals and Phillies, because we're fading that game. And it is generating all of the different scenarios available to us. It's building off a of projected score. So these are the lineups that we're getting but look at what it's doing for us. It's actually building. So some of you guys will be like, dude, like, what, like, how do I do that thing that Osimo does where he builds like, uh, you know, 900 lineups and then takes his top 150? It's like, this is, well, I don't know how, but we can do something similar now. So by the time this gets to the end, you know, we might be close to 1,500 lineups. So we actually have 10, so 1,500 lineups. So we actually have 10 times as many lineups than we need. We can take it as is. So if we just want to take this as is, we just go to our um, our batters, and this is where we can see our exposures. And again, a lot of these guys with high home run equity, like we talked about. But like this is like you want leverage. Like this is what your build should look like. This guy's gonna be six percent owned. You're smashing the field. This guy hits a home run. Like your like your your little guys like they're not moving a little bit like they're moving a lot that, like that's how you're leveraged like this is not a hard game it just just requires you know understanding basic principles your team stacks this is everything that you have without changing anything you know we saw that the indians were going to be the chalk so look where we're at we're we're on the astros which traditionally are going to be a chalkier team but a team against the reds 
that's been really good this year from a pitching perspective. This is how you get leverage without doing any research. The, they, like Matt and his team have already done the work for us. If the Astros get to 10 runs, dude, game's over. Like you're cashing a ton of lineups. But like, let's say like you wanted to make adjustments. So let's say that you're like, hey, you know what? Um, I, I only want 30% of the Astros. And let's say we want, you know, let's say we want to double up on Texas. So what it's doing when we do that, it's working behind the scenes to, of this pool of 1,500, it's trying to re-quantify. When we download our CSV, it's going to re-quantify with our, with our new perspectives. Here's a breakdown of all of our stacks from an individual basis. Per team, per type. The Mets, 25% five-man Mets without doing any research. And I haven't checked the scores in a couple minutes, but the, the Mets have 10 runs. We didn't do any research. I didn't do anything. You guys saw me log into this and just basically walk you through what, what Matt talks about. And then these are our, our stack types, you know? So we talked about paths to victory. Any one of these can, can get you to, to the finish line, get you a bink, get you first. We have nice little exposure, but say you wanted more five threes, you could just increase this. And then it's gonna, it's gonna recalibrate everything behind the scenes. So then when we download our CSV, we'll be getting this based off of what's in our 1500 pool. And again, if you forget any of this stuff, just go over the toggle switches. But here's another thing too, is there's a projected score and then there's the Sabre score. And that's going to switch things up. That's gonna give us a little bit more different exposures based off of the, the, the Sabre score, the Sabre metric. So there's, there's, there's tons of different things here. And we haven't even got into our, our percentile stuff. So like, we'll get into that next, but I just wanted to show you what that looks like. And then you click your button to download. We're gonna get our CSV. You can instantly upload that to, to DraftKings. And whatever you're recalibrating here is gonna reflect in all of your exposures. So you, you can see everything. I mean, they made a very simple, sleek tool. I'm, I'm, I'm going very fast. I'm giving you guys a very, you know, 40,000 foot view on this. So whatever you guys, um, you know, want to adjust, adjust, get the free subscription, play around, and then step up to the big boy subscription. Like, it's not that complicated. Like, you know, we know we don't like going more than 25% uh, on the pitcher. So we're going to just drop down Cole Hamels. Dude, like, all of our stuff's already there. It's already recalibrated. Recal so we downloaded our new CSV. We'd have, you know, 25% uh, Cole Hamels instead of 70%. So that's the high-level view of this thing. On our next section, we're going to take a look at uh, some of the other stuff, but I, I went pretty deep here. There's a ton to cover, and again, I'm not the best person to be covering this. I'm just trying to show you guys everything that it can do uh, to make you guys as dangerous of players uh, as you can be. So thank you guys again. We'll see you guys in the next segment.